This video covers activity 7, interface testing for the Martley Pool College database. You're advised to spend 20 minutes on this activity, and um, providing you've done plenty of practice prior to the exam, you should get through this easily within the 20 minutes. The task requires that you test the interface of your relational database using suitable test data, that's normal, erroneous and extreme as appropriate. You must not add validation to any of the tables and you must provide evidence of form level testing that proves. So we're testing the function of the form here, not the underlying tables. The referee's name must be present. The referee's email must use a valid format. The level of the referee cannot be below the valid range. A record will save in the referee table if the referee's details are present and valid. The result of the fixture will be generated correctly as win, loss or draw. The overall number of goals for Martipool College should be displayed, including the current fixture. And the overall number of goals against Martipool College should be displayed, including the current fixture. You're going to complete the test log to show how you've tested these input forms using the template that's given to you for the exam, and that's Activity 7 template and you need to save this test log as a PDF in your folder for submission and the file name there is activity7 underscore registration number underscore surname underscore first letter of first name. So I've opened up the test log for activity7 and you'll notice it's identical to the test log in part A and we're reminded here at the top about the type of test. We've got N for normal, R for erroneous, X for extreme. And I always remember these N obviously normal data that's going to be accepted by the computer. X is used to test a range. So you're testing those boundaries, the extremes of those boundaries. And then anything else would be R for erroneous data. You need to ensure you screen print your evidence for all the tests and that the screen prints are readable and referenced to the test and actually contain the data that you said in your test data column. You can widen the actual results column if you need to, or you can add extra images underneath the test log. Just make sure they're clearly labeled so that the examiner knows which tests they apply to. And Big, big red letters do not carry out any testing other than that specified in the activity. You won't get extra marks for any extra tests. And then when you've completed, if you've got any rows at the end, you can delete those to make your test log tidy. So when I complete this test log, I'm going to complete the test data column, the expected results, and then the screen print column first. I'll leave numbering the tests and the type of test to the end. because just find that easier and quicker to zip through those right at the end. So let's have a look at this first test. The referee's name must be present. We're writing the test data column, all the data that we're going to use in the form. So in this case, the referee ID is auto number. The surname we're going to leave blank. The referee email I'm going to choose test at test.ac.uk and the level number is five. And we're writing the expected results column, what we expect the database to do with that data. So in this case, the record will not save. The referee surname must be entered and an error message will be displayed. The referee surname must be present. So we'll go to our database, key in these, the test data into the form and take an image. And here we have the image. The referee ID is auto number. We've left the surname blank. Test at test dot ac.uk and then referee level number five and it shows that referee surname must be present the error message being displayed the next test the referee's email must use a valid format again in the test data column write down the data that's going to be used referee id auto number the referee surname i'm going to use test the referee email is going to be test at .ac.uk and the level number is five. Into the results column, what you'd expect the database to do with this data. And again, in this case, the record will not save. The email address format is incorrect. Error message will be displayed. Email address must be in the correct format. Go to your database, key this into your form and then take an image. And here's the image. So we've got the referee ID, auto number, surname test, 
and you can see there the email is test at .ac.uk and referee level 5. Error message is displayed. The referee email must be in the correct format. The test is the level of the referee cannot be below the valid range. In the test data column, referee ID auto number, referee surname test, referee email is test at test.ac.uk and then that referee level number is going to be four. Remember it's got to be five, six or seven, so fours below. In the expected results column then, the record will not save. The referee level number must be between five and seven. An error message is displayed. The referee level must be between five and seven. And here's the image to go with that. And you can see we've got all the data in that we said in the test data column. And that referee level number is four with the error message displayed. The fourth test is to demonstrate that a record will save in the referee table if the referee's details are present and valid. Here's the test data. It's all normal data that's going to be accepted. We've got an auto number, referee ID, the surname's present, it's the test, the email's in the correct format, that's test at test.ac.uk, and a level number of five. In the expected results column, the record will save, and a message will be displayed, referee record is saving. And here's the image to go with that, showing the message, the referee record is saving. Tests 5, 6 and 7 can all be demonstrated in one test. But let's just go over what's required. The result of the fixture will be generated correctly as win, less or draw. The overall number of goals for Martlepool College should be displayed, including the current fixture. And the overall number of goals against Martlepool College should be displayed, including the current fixture. In the test data column then, I'm going to select Northridge College. I'm going to put goals for three and goals against two. And the result of that, the result displayed will be win. And the overall goals for is 43 plus three. That 43 I got from adding up all the goals for in TBO fixture. And the overall goals against is 41 plus 2, that's 43. The 41 again I got from adding up all the goals against from TBL fixture. And here's the image demonstrating that. Northridge College, goals 4-3, goals against 2. That result is a win. The overall goals for is 46 and the overall goals against is 43. The next thing to do is number all the tests, and I've literally just gone through and numbered them consecutively, one, two, three, four, five, six and seven, and then finally I'm going to put in the test type. Now the first test is R, R for erroneous, the second test is R for erroneous, the third test is X because I am testing a range and I'm testing the boundary or the limit of that range. The fourth test is N for normal because all that data will be accepted. And then five, six and seven is also normal. There's no validation in that form. It's merely a form to find data, enter data and carry out a calculation. Just finally on this test log, if your tests don't work as expected, you'll need to make an entry in this final column uh, you can leave this blank as long as all your tests have worked correctly. But if the results aren't as expected, you need to make some sort of explanation in this final column. Explain the error, and if you can correct it, also explain that, and also include some screen prints of that correction. That completes the test log. The next video will cover Activity 8, which is the evaluation of the interface.